welcome to a new session on informatics and introduction to bioinformatics. Basic concepts of IPR, copyrights and patents part 2. The 21st century will be the century of knowledge, indeed the century of the intellect. A nation's ability to translate knowledge into wealth and social good through innovations will determine its future. Thus, innovations hold the key to the creation as well as processing of knowledge. Consequently, issues of generation, evaluation, protection and exploitation of intellectual property would become critically important all over the world. Intellectual property can be characterized as the property in ideas or the expression. It is a creation of the mind, for example, a technological innovation, a poem or a design. It protects the rights of individuals and businesses who have transformed the ideas into property by granting rights to the owners of those properties. Intellectual property rights are rights granted to a person or a company by a state for products of intellectual effort and ingenuity. The intangible property created by individual or corporation which is protected under trademarks, patent and copyright is called intellectual property and intellectual property right is a collective term which includes all these laws. We encounter intellectual property at every step of our life today. A patent is a legal monopoly granted for a limited time to the owner of an invention by the government in exchange for full disclosure of his or her invention for excluding others from making, using, selling and importing patented product or process for producing that product for those purposes without his or her consent. Plagiarism Plagiarism is the unauthorized use or close imitation of the language and thoughts of another author and the representation of them as one's own original work. In college courses, we are continuously using other people's ideas. We read them in texts, hear them in lecture, discuss them in class and incorporate them into our own writing. As a result, it is very important that we give credit where it is due. Plagiarism is using others' ideas and words without clearly acknowledging the sources of that information. As we read, study, perform experiments and gather perspectives, we are drawing on another people's ideas. Building on their ideas and experiences, we create our own. When we put our ideas on paper, our teachers want to distinguish between the ideas borrowed from other people and our own newly recent perspectives or conclusions. We make these distinctions in a written paper by citing the sources for other ideas. Providing appropriate citations will also help readers who are interested in our topic and additional related material to read. When we cite a source, we are using an expert's ideas as proof evidence of a new idea that we are trying to communicate to the reader. To avoid plagiarism, we must give credit whenever we use and other people's ideas option or theory, any facts, statistics, graphs, drawings, any pieces of information that are not common knowledge, quotation of another person's actual spoken or written words. Significance of plagiarism towards scientific writing and publishing. Scientific writing can be a complex and arduous process for it simultaneously demands clarity and conciseness two elements that often clash with each other. In addition, accuracy and integrity are fundamental components of the scientific enterprise and therefore of scientific writing. Thus, good scientific writing must be characterized by clear expression, conciseness, accuracy of what is being reported and perhaps most importantly, honesty. In scientific writing, perhaps the most widely recognized unethical lapse is plagiarism. One example is reporting and discussing results 
of one's research in the context of literature that is supportive of our conclusions while at the same time ignoring evidence that is contrary to our findings. Another writing malpractice occurs when another author's review of a literature is used, yet the reader is led to believe that the current author has conducted the actual review. Plagiarism can manifest itself in a variety of ways and it is not just confined to student papers or published articles or books. For example, consider a scientist who makes a presentation at a conference and discusses at length an idea or concept that had already been proposed by someone else and that is not considered common knowledge. During his presentation, he fails to fully acknowledge the specific source of the idea and consequently misleads the audience into thinking that he was the originator of that idea. This too may constitute an instance of plagiarism. In the sciences, as in most other scholarly endeavors, ethical writing demands that ideas, data and conclusions that are borrowed from others and used as a foundation of one's own contributions to the literature must be properly acknowledged. The specific manner in which we make such acknowledgement varies from discipline to discipline. However, source attribution typically takes the form of either a footnote or a reference citation. Duplicate publication involves publishing the same material in the same format in more than one journal, book or internet resources. Some editors are developing policies in an effort to prevent duplicate publication. A manuscript to be published only if it has not been submitted somewhere else. Plagiarism and the World Wide Web The World Wide Web has become a popular source of information for students and many questions have arisen about how to avoid plagiarizing these sources. In most cases, the same rules apply as to a printed source. When a writer must refer to ideas or quote from a World Wide Web site, he must cite that source. If a writer wants to use visual information from a World Wide Web site, many of the same rules apply. Copying visual information or graphics from a World Wide Web site or from a printed source is very similar to quoting information and source of the visual information and the source of the visual information or graphic must be cited. These rules also apply to other users of textual or visual information from the World Wide Web sites. For example, if a student is constructing a web page as a class project and copies graphics or visual information from other sites, he must also provide information about the source of this information. In this case, it might be a good idea to obtain permission from the site's owner before using the graphics. Patent system in India. The constitution of India under entry 49 of the union list of matters falling within the union government for purpose of legislation mentions about patents, inventions and designs, copyright, trademarks and merchandise. It makes no specific mention of intellectual property. Property in the constitution generally means tangible property. However, Intellectual property as a form of property can be put under article 300A dealing with property and be entitled to a legal right. TRIPS are one of the most controversial agreements of the World Trade Organization which has been debated worldwide. Member countries of the WTO are automatically bound by the agreement. The agreement covers most forms of intellectual property including patents, copyright, trademarks, geographical indications, industrial designs, trade secrets and exclusionary rights over new plant varieties. All the member countries of the WTO including India are under binding commitment to implement the TRIPS that is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights provisions in their national patent laws. With the enactment of patents act 2005, 
the amending process of Indian Patents Act 1970 to bring it in line with the TRIPS agreement has been completed by the government. The earlier two amendments were enacted by parliament during 1999 and 2002. In the amending process, some safeguard provisions have been incorporated. However, still some more possibilities in this direction within the framework of the TRIPS agreement have been ignored. In addition, there are a few other stipulations which need to be rectified to avoid legal disputes. The original Patent Act 1970 was a balanced act which helped the growth of industry and also adequately covered the public interest angle. TRIPS Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights TRIPS also provide rules regarding domestic procedures and remedies for the enforcement of intellectual property rights. The rules are general principles applicable to all enforcement procedures that is they contain provisions on civil and administrative procedures and appropriate remedies so that right holders be they patentees, copyright owners or other intellectual property owners can effectively enforce their rights. The three main features of the agreement are standards. The agreement sets out the minimum standards of protection to be provided by each member. Each of the main elements of protection is defined, namely the subject matter to be protected, the rights to be conferred and permissible exceptions to those rights and the minimum duration of protection. The agreement sets these standards by requiring first that the substantive obligations of the main conventions of the WIPO, the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property and the Berne Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works in their most recent versions must be complied with. The TRIPS agreement is thus sometimes referred to as a Berne and Paris plus agreement. Enforcement The second main set of provisions deals with domestic procedures and remedies for the enforcement of intellectual property rights. The agreement lays down certain general principles applicable to all IPR enforcement procedures. In addition, it contains provisions on civil and administrative procedures and remedies, provisional measures, special requirements related to border measures and criminal procedures which specify in a certain amount of detail the procedures and remedies that must be available so that right holders can effectively enforce their rights. Dispute Settlement The agreement makes disputes between WTO members about the respect of the TRIPS obligations subject to the WTO's dispute settlement procedures. The TRIPS agreement is a minimum standards agreement which allows members to provide more extensive protection of intellectual property if they so wish. Members are left free to determine the appropriate method of implementing the provisions of the agreement within their own legal system and practice. The TRIPS patent system is based upon a joint statement presented by the Multinational Association of USA, Europe and Japan to the GATE Secretariat in June 1988 during the Uruguay round negotiations. The main features of the TRIPS patent system are as follows. TRIPS provides for patent protection for any invention whether product or process in all fields of technology provided that they are new, involve an inventive step and are capable of industrial application. The foreign patent holders have been absolved from working of their patents and imports by them are to enjoy the same patent rights without discrimination as to the place of invention, field of technology and whether the products are imported or locally produced. The term of all patents shall not end before the expiration of 20 years from the date of application. There is no licensing of right provision. The compulsory license provisions are having tight conditional ties with constraints for exports. There is no royalty ceiling for compulsory licenses. The royalty payment is based on the economic value of the license. 
The above features of the TRIPS agreement have been implemented in the amending process of our Patents Act 1970. TRIPS Patent System in India The patent system in India is governed by the Patents Act 1970 and the Patent Rules 1972 effective from April 20th 1972. Subsequently, the Patent Act 1970 is amended effective from January 1st 1995 and the Patent Rules 1972 is amended effective from June 2nd 1999. The TRIPS agreement which came into effect on January 1st 1995 is to date the most comprehensive multilateral agreement on intellectual property. On December 27th, the central government issued the patents ordinance in 2004. The ordinance amends the India Patent Act 1970 for the third time with a view to introducing product patents for drugs, food and chemicals. With this, India claimed to have confirmed to the trade related intellectual property rights agreement of the World Trade Organization. In continuance of the ordinance, the Parliament of India recently has approved the third patents bill 2005 with the Rajya Sabha passing it on March 23, 2005. Earlier, the Lok Sabha passed the bill after the government incorporated several amendments. This patent law, which was a model for other developing countries like Argentina, Mexico, Egypt, Brazil and Chile, has been replaced by the Indian Patent Act 1999, which is modelled on the basis of the TRIPS. This amendment seeks to implement the obligations that India has taken in the field of patents by signing the TRIPS agreement. The bill generally aims at making the 1970 Patents Acts as TRIPS compliant as possible. Besides TRIPS, India is also a member of the following international treaties related to intellectual property rights. Convention Establishing World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO, Paris Convention for the Protection of Intellectual Property with the effect from December 7th, 1998, Patent Corporation Treaty PCT with effective from December 7th, 1998. Information Technology and IPR Information technology requires a strong IPR protection system for many reasons. The important ones are It changes rapidly. Product life cycle is becoming shorter. Investments on research and development, production marketing are very high. It is a multidisciplinary area requiring high level of skills. It is unaffected by geographical boundaries. It is a great equalizer and unifying factor for the human society. It is now highly software driven. The industry is very competitive. Therefore, large number of patents are being granted in the IT sector all over the world including India. In a recent study conducted by the Patent Facilitating Center or PFC of the Technology Information Forecasting and Assessment Council. TIFAC, it was found that electronics is the second most important area after chemicals in which a large number of patent applications are being filed in India. Similarly, application related to internet and e-commerce may also be tracked. Internet has introduced many new features in sharing of information and knowledge and there is a general feeling that some special protection regimes may be called for. The matter is being discussed globally by the international organization like World Intellectual Property Organization WIPO and World Trade Organization. So far, no recommendations have emerged, which could be considered acceptable to all. However, there is one common understanding that new rights of intellectual property should be avoided and no greater protection to intellectual property need be provided in the cyberspace than that exists elsewhere. Types of intellectual property right applicable to internet. Generally speaking, the enforcement aspects rather than the protection aspects of IPR are occupying people's minds and 
people are perhaps more concerned about the non-IPR issues such as levying duty on accessing information on internet and doing e-commerce through the internet. While dealing with the IPR, the internet, one is predominantly concerned with copyrights, trademarks, patents, registered design and protection of IC layout design and undisclosed information. Each of the rights mentioned above provide a different kind of degree of protection. The strictest regime is the one provided by patents. Domain name and trademark issues. The domain name is a part of the email address or the home page address which appears after www. Domain names are divided into hierarchies. The top level of the hierarchy appears after the last dot in a domain name. In Microsoft.com, the top level domain name is .com. The .com name is the most common top level domain name and is used to indicate that the domain name is owned by a commercial enterprise. Other common top level domain names include .org for non-profit organizations, .net for network and internet related organizations, .edu for four year colleges and universities and .gov for government entities. In addition to these generic domain names, each country has been given a unique top level domain name. For instance, .ca indicates a domain in Canada and .in indicates an Indian domain. The estimated number of domain name registration has increased. It is clear that the internet is an effective tool for marketing internationally and creating more and more business opportunities. Potential markets are not limited by geographical boundaries. For this new communication medium, the goods or services offered are not available for instant physical identification as are goods in a store. Instead, these goods or services must be located and accessed by a domain name. It is at this point that an issue related to trademark arises. The concern is that an internet address assigned to A would contain words constituting B's trademark. If A is an entirely different business from B, there may not be any trademark infringement problem because there is no possibility of consumer being confused. Many developing countries are not members of treating related to trademarks. Due to the international nature of internet, this will lead to many legal cases as many applicants will have very difficulty in accessing the trademarks and trade names already registered in other countries. This development makes the allotment of domain name dependent on a global search. Further, consideration may be given to changing format of the domain name to avoid the trademark issues. No clear-cut guidelines exist to decide the cases related to domain and trade names. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this session. Intellectual property rights are a means of protecting and rewarding innovation. Property in the constitution generally means tangible property. However, intellectual property as a form of property can be put under article 300A dealing with property and can be entitled to a legal right. TRIPS are one of the most controversial agreements of the World Trade Organization which has been debated worldwide. All the member countries of the World Trade Organization including India are under binding commitment to implement the TRIPS provision in their national patent laws. Information technology requires a strong IPR protection system. Plagiarism is unauthorized use or close imitation of the language and thoughts of another author and the representation of them as one's own original work. The domain name is the part of the email address or the home page address which appears after www. The internet is an effective tool for marketing internationally and creating more and more business opportunities. Here are a few questions for you to work out from what we have learnt in this session. 
discuss intellectual property rights on living organisms. Intellectual property right issues in India elaborate the various provisions of TRIPS, discuss the different types of plagiarism, internet and IPR, discuss the issues. Here are a few books for your reference. Global Dimension of Intellectual Property Rights in Science and Technology by Wallace Dean M. B., Moggy M. E. and Shoen R. A., Washington DC, National Academy Press, 1993. Ideal Matter, Globalization and the Intellectual Property Debate by Morris, Julian Roslind Mowat, W. Duncan Rieke, Richard Trent, Center for the New Europe, 2002. Is Plagiarism Ever Insignificant? by Burke R. N. American Journal of Rohingya Genealogy, 157 614, 1991. Maintaining Scientific Integrity in Publications by Fane J. A., Diabetes Educator, 1997. Ethics and Scholarly Writing by Cop L. A. Journal of Professional Nursing, page 9, 67 to 68, 1993. Website www.worldtradelaw.net slash your agreements slash trips agreement dot pdf. Thank you for watching this session. We will meet in the next session with another topic. Till then, bye.